Dear colleagues, dear partners, I'm very glad that you find time and have this opportunity to participate in our webinar, webinar on advancing the management and use of pasture and forest resource based on agroforestry methods and through a multi-stakeholder approach in Kyrgyzstan. All of you probably feel that this topic, this subject for our country, for Kyrgyzstan, is very important and main purpose our webinar is to exchange experience in the area of pasture and forest resource management and to share experience of our implemented, fruitfully implemented collaboration with the civil society, with the state institutes and private sector and our aim, main aim of our webinar is to develop partnership relations with all of our strategic partners and i'm glad to see that not only partners from kyrgyzstan but also we have participants partners from Central Asia and our partners and friends from Asian region who we are members together of the ILC. Therefore, please let me start today's webinar and I have to say that we will have speakers, definitely, we will have our foreign partners, speakers, therefore we provide simultaneous translation, so the language bridge would be Ularbek Turbobekov, so the he will assist us to understand each other better. So, in order to hear each other properly, I'm as a moderator, I will have a microphone and video camera on, and I would ask, I would urge you in order to eliminate all the barriers and noises, I would urge you to switch off your microphones. And if we have any questions, Shirley, I would uh, kindly ask you to switch on your microphone and camera whenever you, uh, you'd like to ask any questions. And all today's materials, they are being recorded today and we will circulate them to our partners. Therefore, as I have already mentioned, please let me start today's webinar and and today's subject is mainly about agriculture and food security and as a welcoming speech i would give a floor to our fao representative office to kyrgyzstan i would uh, give a floor to dinara rahmanov please you're welcome thank you very much i call mustafa dear colleagues dear friends on behalf of the Food and Agriculture Organization, 
of FAO, I'm really pleased to see you all at today's event, and I'd like to thank the organizers and speakers, all the participants who are participating in this event, uh, for your contribution, for your work to improve the forestry sector in Kyrgyzstan. And FAO is a leading agency organization of UN, and we do work in all the aspects and issues of the agricultural development, development of forestry, livestock sector development, and surely improvement of uh, food security. For us, it is important to promote advanced innovations and to provide technical assistance to the countries in all these directions. As you know, that we are implementing a number of projects in the forestry development, and one of the projects which is funded by the Global uh, Environment Fund. It is aimed at facilitating promoting sustainable uh, forest and resource management in the climate change conditions. And within the framework of this project, we are promoting agroforestry as innovative forestry management and traditional land management. And this mechanism of uh, establishing intersectoral collaboration in order to develop forestry and agriculture sector in the Kyrgyz Republic. We, as a technical agency, it is very important for FAO to share advanced knowledge and uh, uh, technologies that are being collected all over the world for the past few years. And I'd like all the webinars participants to know something new, to gain some new knowledge, to gain new technologies. And we will have a presentation on behalf of FAO. We will also share our experience in this sector. And uh, once again, I'd like to say that I'm glad to see all of you, to welcome all of you. We haven't seen each other for a long time. We keep sitting whole days on this webinars. Probably we have more time to discuss and to complete more things. But I hope that uh, times will improve globally in Kyrgyzstan. And using this opportunity, I'd like to wish the successful finalization of this year and to have healthy next year. And I hope that we'll have more chances to meet each other next year and to have hill trips together and trips to the forest together. And I wish fruitful work to all the webinar participants and new ideas and new proposals that could improve our partnership relations in the uh, areas of forest, land, and pasture management. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Dinara. Uh, really, as you know, you are our main partner amongst international organizations. And with the support of your organization, I can't say that we did a lot for the forestry and agricultural sector with your support. Thank you. Sorry, you are saying for the forestry and in some kind for the agricultural sector. But if we see agricultural representatives here, they would say vice versa. Mainly you work for, for the forestry, for the agricultural sector. I'd like to say that we need to reinforce intersectoral collaboration because forestry and agricultural sector, they are interlinked a lot in our country. Therefore, we work in all the directions and we hope that this webinar seminar would uh, reinforce our partnership relations. Thank you. Intersectoral relations will re strengthen the forestry and agricultural sector, this agroforestry sector. So here we see the state secretary of the Ministry of Agriculture. It is also our close partner organization. We see here Ermek Bakhavizunov, state secretary. We've been working with the Minister of Agriculture based on the memorandum. 
Yeah, this link is FAO, Ministry of Agriculture, and our organization. This linkage was really practical, and I'd like to give a welcoming, to give a floor to the State Secretary of the Ministry of Agriculture, Food Industry, and Processing Industry, to Mr. Bahavidinov. Good day, participants of the webinar and representatives of FAO and other participating colleagues. And on behalf of our minister, I would briefly tell you about the condition of the agriculture. As you know, agriculture in Kyrgyzstan is one of the leading sectors of the economy. In terms of the economic contribution, as well as the number of employed people, and we have done a number of agri agrarian reforms and we continue improving the land reforms and private ownership of land had demonstrated a number of positive results and also we saw some negative impacts on system of land management and low productivity of lands is one of the disadvantages of land management also lack of the scientists scientific lack of uh, the uh, scientific work in terms of the uh, breeding good breeds of livestock and for the few uh, past years we have a big lack of investments and it was clearly obvious uh, this year when we have this COVID pandemic. And it is important to hand over the management to the local authorities, uh, local, uh, pasture management to the local authorities. And also it is very important to develop agroforestry development to have this uh, agroforestry sector development in Kyrgyzstan in order to improve well-being of the population in Kyrgyzstan. It is one of the priorities of the Minister of Agriculture for the industry. And the aim is to have better forms of uh, using the lands to have more productive lands. And in this context, I hope that webinar will make its input to reinforce our relations and will improve pasture and forest resources based on agroforestry and based on multi-sector approach in the Kyrgyz Republic. And using this opportunity, we ensure that our ministry is ready to provide support to this project. And concluding, I'd like to ensure that we are ready to do all our best in order to implement all our activities that we have planned. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Mr. Bahavi Dinov, we are very glad to see that all the topics that we are going to discuss today, that we have a support from the political body, from the sectoral body, and I hope really that, as you have mentioned, that all what we are going to start, we will have it successfully implemented. Thank you. Let me continue our webinar. As we have already mentioned, and as 
Ms. Bahavidinov mentioned that today's webinar we have participants and we have Mr. Jim Kudin participating at today's webinar, representative of IFAD, and we are going to talk a lot about IFAD because IFAD provides good support and assistance, especially in terms of pasture management. And I'd like to know what are the further plans, plans of IFAD in Kyrgyzstan with regards to the forest and land resources management in Kyrgyzstan. Therefore, let me give a floor to Mr. Jimmy Godin to make his presentation. Please, Mr. Godin, welcome. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for letting me. Uh, can you hear me well? Because I just made a, a quick change in the microphone, and I want to make sure that uh, you... Could, could, could you... Could you speak a bit louder? Can you hear me better? Yes, now, now it's better. All right, thank you. So uh, thank you for for inviting us. Thank you for letting us also uh, uh, having the opportunity to share on IFAD's work in Kyrgyzstan. Um, my name is Jimmy Gona. I'm working under the land tenure desk uh, in IFAD headquarters. So I'm not part of the country team, but I will speak on uh, their behalf. So uh, again, bear with me if uh, you have uh, some some uh, uh, some need for insight or, or, or specificities. I will be I will do my best to provide you with information. But there are uh, things I obviously uh, uh, don't, uh, don't know. All right. So very very briefly, I will just mention. Uh, thank you, Sarah, for sharing the presentation. So uh, I will introduce uh, Ifad's work on. Uh, tenure security in general. So IFAD does recognize that tenure security is key uh, to foster investments on sustainable land uh, management, agricultural development, and the management and use of, of pasture and forest resources. So IFAD has been uh, an early and ongoing supporters of the uh, voluntary guidelines uh, on the governance of tenure, the VGGTs. And IFAD approach to tenure security follows its uh, internal land policy approved in 2008 and is in, uh, in line with the international instrument, including the VGGTs and the SD, uh, SDGs. So typically how IFAD works on tenure security, it's uh, basically included into broader agricultural and rural development programs. Um, we estimated that over the past five years, IFAD and their partners, mostly government partners, have invested close to $150 million on tenure security measures uh, in around half of the project and program that uh, IFAD supports around the world. Uh, in terms of collaboration with the ILC, so IFAD has a special, uh, 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 let's say, relationship with the ILC as uh, IFAD hosts the Secretariat of the Coalition in Rome, um, and IFAD is also uh, founding members of uh, the, the coalition. Uh, uh, recently, um, ILC and IFAD have uh, strengthened their collaboration. They have developed a, a three-year roadmap to increase their collaboration uh, in different thematic, including ranchland, dryland, uh, uh, livestock management. And, um, with the objective so to, to increase the impact uh, uh, at different level. Uh, the partnership is embedded into different operational objectives, uh, and one of them is uh, focusing on country level impact at scale through police dialogue, technical support in project development and implementations. Um, I will come back to that later. Uh, Sarah, can you please uh, change the slide? Right, you can also move to the next one. Thank you. So, uh, IFAD intervention in Kyrgyzstan. So, um, IFAD country strategy uh, developed with uh, the government uh, focuses on uh, inclusive rural transformation 
and uh, smallholder farmers and, and, and uh, uh, pasture groups. No? Um, the COSAP has a strong focus on livestock sector activities, uh, efficient and sustainable use of the country's pasture resources uh, through support to community-based management and, uh, and uh, in terms of policy engagement, if that also supports the, the implementation of the 2009 pasture law uh, by continuing support to its decentralization uh, uh, and the decentralization of pasture management to local communities and the production of evidence-based uh, input to police dialogue. Very quickly, uh, IFAD portfolio in Kyrgyzstan. Um, IFAD is currently supporting the government with two projects, uh, the access to market project uh, up to 2023 and the livestock and market development project uh, that aims to close next year. There is a new project under development, uh, the project on a regional res res uh, resilience pastoral community project that should start uh, next year. In addition, IFAD is also supporting uh, their activities with non-lending activities through grants and also uh, with policy engagement support. I will expand a little bit more on the livestock and management uh, li uh, livestock market development project as it has a strong focus on uh, uh, enhancing economic growth uh, in pasture communities. So basically the, the objective of the project is to improve livestock productivity and uh, enhance climate resilience of pasture communities. Um, the project, as I said, uh, is about to close. So there's a, a strong interest here also to uh, learn in, uh, what are what have been the good practices and uh, what are the lessons we can we can draw from this experience. We have also collaborate with, uh, collaborated with uh, the civil society. One of the members of the ILC, Cal uh, Fu, if I pronounce it correctly, that supported the project uh, with linking with uh, more than 400 pasture communities. The project also helped to uh, produce uh, and generate knowledge. Uh, knowledge in terms of um, uh, adaptation to, to, to climate change or climate hazard through uh, the development of a pasture, pasture information system uh, and a manual uh, linked to it. So this, this, this is a, a technical tool that will that aim to help the politician, uh, technician and pasture community uh, with relevant and accurate information on uh, meteorological risks you know, to avoid that the negative consequences uh, of natural disasters. Uh, I have a colleague here that helped to produce this manual and uh, if, if he wants to, uh, he can provide you with uh, more information later. Uh, another uh, interesting uh, piece of knowledge produced as part of this project is um, a case study led by Lendeza on uh, the place of women in pasture communities. And uh, the idea was to identify the good practices and some of the lessons learned from the project, which thought to ensure that women actively participate in the management of pasture issues and that they take uh, a part of decision-making uh, processes. So we can uh, again share these uh, two uh, knowledge product with you uh, if you're interested. I won't necessarily talk more about the new project as uh, I think it's under development and I leave it to the country team uh, the chance to, to mention it. Um, so could you move to the next slide please Sarah? Right, so what are the opportunities for strengthening collaboration in Kyrgyzstan? So if that investment in Kyrgyzstan, I think demonstrate a uh, strong potential for joint uh, uh, country policy engagement and programming. This with the Asia platform of the ILC, uh, with uh, the CAPA, the Central Asia Pastoralist Forum, uh, ILRI, other CGI centers, FAO and, and other actors, of course. Um, IFAD, as part of the new uh, hub plan for next year, already has uh, pre-identified areas for collaboration, including technical support to and uh, support to uh, uh, intervention um, and complementarities with IFAD portfolio in terms of design, implementation, or evaluation, depending on the stage of the project. Uh, policy engagement initiative and impact assessment. 
focusing on uh, better implementation of the pasture law, including possible amendment to uh, update bylaws and, and uh, local level uh, procedures in relation to rangeland tenure, uh, and equity of pasture use rights among uh, local citizens and communities. We also understand uh, there is opportunities for collaboration in terms of uh, knowledge generation, uh, especially uh, when we talk about traditional knowledge and uh, gender justice. Um, we could foster exchange and advocacy on these two thematic, uh, develop uh, more understanding on how we can foster gender equity uh, for sustainable pasture use in the region, enhance uh, experience uh, at, the, at the regional level, also on agroforestry, and uh, also to mention that IFAD is uh, also supporting a new project, a new grant uh, to foster women's land rights uh, in different regions and different projects uh, uh, around the world. And uh, Kyrgyzstan is part of this uh, global uh, uh, approach. And here again, we think that uh, through the CGI centers that are leading on this project, we could also learn more uh, from our experience and, and the place of women in, in uh, these pasture communities. Finally, I will also mention an opportunity for collaboration uh, on GIS application for securing rangeland. Um, there is uh, one over dimension somehow uh, uh, through the, the pasture information system manuals, which uh, looks more into uh, climate hazards prediction and adaptation to climate change. But we could also uh, mention another project led also by uh, IFAD Lent in the desk on combining georeferencing technologies and participatory method for securing tenure rights. Um, and the idea was to develop a set of guidelines and a training module for to combine these two approaches to better secure uh, communities' rights. And, and again, uh, some of the project here supported by IFAD in Kyrgyzstan will and should benefit from, from this initiative. All right, um, I think this is it from my side. I'm happy to provide a, a further explanation if needs be. And again, uh, uh, maybe one of my colleagues, if, if they are here, they can also uh, share more insight uh, during the Q&A session. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jim, for a very interesting presentation. We really know that IFAD helps a lot Kyrgyzstan, especially in terms of conducting a reform on partial land resources and currently also we have IFAD mission in Kyrgyzstan and I hope that in the future we will have other projects continuing and I hope we'll have also the benefit on land on pastures and forest management issues and questions let us uh, uh, raise the questions or issues after the following presentation and i'd like to remind that we can send written messages via our chat if we have questions and i'd like to remind that uh, I'd like to urge speakers to keep the timing. So we have 10 minutes per presentation. Therefore, I'd like to give a floor to Cholpon for her presentation. Manager of the FAO project. Thank you, Aiko. Good day, dear colleagues. I'm glad to see all of you. Thank you for your invitation for, for today's 
webinar. I'd like to tell to report about what had been done within the framework of GFN, FAO project sustainable management of mountain forest and plant resource under climate change conditions. I'd like to report about the results of or about the progress of this project. Okay, agroforestry, what is that? It is a combined growing of trees and agricultural crops. Next slide. Oh, on the same area, and where there wouldn't be any influence made on the productivity of the latter. In other words, it's deliberately combining agriculture and, pro and productive trees in order to set up a sustainable management system. Agroforestry includes wind breaking, forest belts. It's also arranging, also restorating plantations, cultivation of crops in alleys. And as a part of 2050 project activities on the area of 5,000 hectares and Oblast, we have created windbreaks. What windbreaks means? As all of us know, it's artificial and made forest belts planted in order to fight droughts and other man-made anthropogenic activities and also when we complement when we implement this activity we also improve the productivity of the crops also improve the yield also we regulate the soil humidity and also we improve the growth and also we protect uh, the uh, channels and also in this cool region tap here um, village with we have 170 hectares of land, all also protected by wind breaks, and, and also in northern region we have 50 hectares with the same activity implemented. And as a pilot plot, uh, we have restored the plantations together with the private farmers in Moscow, Moscow district 500 uh, hectares in Osh region, 1,000 hectares where we have implemented this on storage planting and this is a cool region we had 150 hectares where we have planted uh, apricots and uh, apple trees and what is the role of these restorative plantations and if we consider from the biodiversity point of view we think increase the biodiversity by creating nesting places and also habitat for different kinds of wild animals. Also, we provide all the conditions to have more clean air by uh, reducing the uh, carbon di dioxide and by increasing the oxygen content in the air. Also, as a part of the project in 2018, we have started the work on uh, cropping uh, crops in alleys. We had 30 hectares and we had 870 hectares uh, cultivated in Osho region. And cultivating of crops, it's including cultivating of cereals, coarse forage, and vegetables uh, between the trees. One, one of the methods of agroforestry is uh, for, forest uh, farming. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Next slide. One more. One more. Next one. Next one. Forest farming. One more. Sorry, can you go back? Forest, forest, forestry farming, forestry farming. This one. Sorry, forest farming. 
only thing I'd like to mention about forest farming. I'm not going to tell about the figures. We had a map on forest farming slide, and you can see the number of hectares on forestry farming, uh, the highlighting the activities, what we did. I'm not going to tell in details and the direction in our country is developed in the south of our country where we have uh, uh, walnut and fruit uh, forests. What we have livestock grazing there and uh, there the livestock also reduces the cost of for mineral fertilizers and livestock through livestock grazing we also improve the soil fertility of the area and if i'm summarizing this uh, presentation i'd like to highlight the advantage of agroforestry it includes biodiversity it includes climate change issues are the only thing i'd like to emphasize all the estimates made, they are demonstrating that one hectare of forest plantations it has around four tons of carbon. It's more than 16 hectares of uh, carbon equivalent. And uh, as being as a signatory country to the Paris Convention, we have to do our commitments on reducing the greenhouse emissions and we need to plant the forest in our country in order to fulfill the commitments under the framework of the uh, Paris Convention. Thank you very much for your attention and as it was mentioned, presentations will be circulated to all the participants and we are always ready to answer your questions. We are open for collaboration and with all of you presenting here, we've been working as partners and therefore, please, you are welcome. We are open for collaboration. Thank you. That's all from my side. Thank you, Cholpon. It is a really very interesting presentation and we keep saying that these activities, these agroforestry methods uh, really have good future for development of our country and you have this good achievements and whenever we make decisions here, we have also people from the Ministry of Agriculture and also representatives of the state agency on the environment protection. I think they will consider these good practices and they will scale them up. Thank you very much. I could, in fact, we did it all together. We, thank you. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Telfon. Thank you, dear colleague. Now we have a round of questions. If you have questions, if uh, there are questions to Jim and Telfon, are there any questions? Hello. Можно вопрос? Слышно меня? Пожалуйста, пожалуйста. Только представляйтесь, пожалуйста. Please introduce yourself. Good day. My name is Lias. We are business owners in tourism sector and we want to shift to farming, maybe temporarily for a short period of time. And about IFAD, I'd like to know, do you have any projects? For example, if I'm holding three hectares or 10 hectares, what are the standards for partnership in order to conserve forest 
or pastures, do you have any criteria to become your partner in that sector? I think Jimmy can tell only whether there is opportunity to support such kind of initiative. Jimmy, could you respond to this question? Yeah, thank you. I didn't understand your name, uh, but I hope you can hear me now. Uh, so yes, IFAD does work. Uh, there are we have project with component on uh, improving access to market uh, uh, value chain, etc. So it really depends on each project, the activities, and uh, what they aim to. Of course, IFAD target uh, and target beneficiaries are always the rural poor uh, people. So my uh, uh, private sector is always understood as uh, a potential partners for the implementation of targeted activities. Um, now IFAD has a policy in terms of uh, engaging with private sector. Uh, we have internal rules and compliance uh, guidelines that we have to follow. Um, and it comes, it depends, it comes at a different level. Of course, I'm not here in position to tell you if uh, uh, there is uh, uh, right now a possibility to link. Uh, it will also depends on your activities and the needs of the project. But uh, what I could do is um, maybe trying to link with the country team and see uh, how uh, the project might uh, be, you know, might offer an opportunity for, for you and based on your business if there's uh, a potential for collaboration. I hope it clarifies the question. Uh, yes, it's, it, it is really um, informative. Um, it, just I was very curious about it. Позвольте, я отвечу сразу. Здравствуйте, уважаемые участники. Good day, dear participants. My name is Antibek Kulev. I'm a director of PIU. The project that had been mentioned by Jimmy, funded by IFAD, it's uh, providing access to the market. It's implemented by our department, by our unit, and the project is about supporting edit value chain in the livestock. I don't know what is your activity, Elias, in agriculture, but in every forestry within the framework of this project, we don't provide support. But as agricultural production, if you consider added value chain development, if your production has to do with four directions that are parts of our project to provide access to the market, this is red meat, milk, uh, wool, and honey. And if you are to produce one of the products, so we are ready to consider your farm uh, in terms of providing our support but you need to be together with one of the leading organizations. You can show that your products are being processed and you have added value chain, separate support to any type of farms, whether it's small or big farms. I know that main mandate of IFAT is to support small scale farms, but we consider our support together. If you are part of the leading organization, in order to reinforce this added value chain effect. If you are interested in our project, you can always appeal to us. We sit on the, in the building of the Ministry of Agriculture and you are welcome. You are welcome to, appeal, to come to us. I'd like to add, Ilias, if you have a willingness to engaged in the agricultural and forest development, we are always ready to collaborate with you and further we have some more presentations that might be of interest for you and we are always to collaborate with you. Just briefly, what Jimmy has told you, has told us, about the IFAD projects in Kyrgyzstan currently. This project is being approved, going through the approval procedure through our government, and it has to go through the internal procedures of our 
government the next year the project will be launched and as part of this new project we are going to support households in the agroforestry sector and one of the partners we will have a, a forest and land users associations and we are going to also provide support to these users and we are going to highlight it from the legal point of view and to provide also support in terms of the uh, business development in these sectors. I see Ms. Jane Carter, she would like to ask a question as I see. You're Thank welcome. you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, um, I'm interested to participate in this discussion because I visited Kyrgyzstan on oh, eight, nine occasions back um, in the period 1997 to 2002, so long time ago. Um, then we were working, I was working for Intercorporation when our Helvetus in the walnut fruit forests of the southern part of the country, working on leasehold forestry, um, introducing more collaborative mechanisms, etc. And of course, agroforestry was very much the thing of the time then. Huh? So I think um, you're all aware it's not a new thing. What I'd be really interested to know is one, whether the leasehold system is still operational, and two, are you actually already measuring carbon? So you have some figures that you could show as to um, the, the benefits of agroforestry. I guess I'm particularly um, addressing this to FAO, but um, yeah. Так, Jane, я наверное здесь я отвечу наверное на это. Let me reply or respond this question when you've been here last time if i remember correctly i'm saying burkanov who used to work in the state agency of the environment protection together with premier bekov and miller yes together with any griza The lease system still is still continuing. Today, I participated on this session where we discussed the reforms in the agroforestry sector and. use of the forest and land resources from the state forest farm, all these agroforestry methods, you were beginners, you launched those initiatives and we will keep in touch. And you are probably interested in, and we are interested in these issues as well. And if you have any new topics, any new things in that sector, I would be more than happy to exchange with you with this information. Thank you, Jane Carter. Do we have other questions? If we don't have questions, let us continue because we need to stick to this time schedule because we are a bit late we are behind this time schedule the next present according to the to the program it's myself sarah could we share my presentation The subject of my presentation is involvement of local population, local communities, into sustainable management and use of forest ecosystems. Next slide, next slide, please. 
here I'd like to introduce our WAS Association. Association was created in 2009-2010 and currently we have 141 legal entities who are members of our association, which unite more than 8,000 farmers, forest, and land users. Next slide, please. Here, these are the activities that we implement together with partners. You see them on this slide. These are state agencies. And first is Ministry of Agriculture, food processing and amelioration. And you see the abbreviation state agency of environment protection and also we do a lot in partnership with international organizations and projects on the left on the left side of the side slide you see our partners and i'd like to know that we work mainly we, we implement majority of our activities in consortiums so within the framework of ILC or in the framework of NEST support or as a part of NEST platform. Uh, Unite and Kyrgyz JIT, which means Kyrgyz pasture. And also we have union of water users and rural development fund and our association. These are the four organizations. And Also, we are members of international and NGO uh, networks. Oh, next slide, please. And we work according to our charter. As you see, main goal of our association is to enable to create sustainable uh, use of natural resources and development of entrepreneurship activities in forest and agrarian sectors. And according to this theme in our charter, we have elaborated a number of objectives and which we have to follow. Next slide, please. In order to perform our in order to achieve our objectives, in part of the forest sector, we help to implement a number of activities of the state agency of the environment protection and forestry. So we help them to implement the forest concept until 2040, and also we follow the legal regulations related to the pasture and forest matters, including the water code, forest code, land code, and other regulations. And as Association of Land and Forest Users, we mainly try to follow Resolution number 192 of the Kyrgyz government on the order of using and utilizing the lands of the state fund adopted in 2018. Next slide, please. We, as you may see on the slide, this year, it's uh, 10 years since we've been created. And during these 10 years, we've we been conducting different kinds of activities on analysis and research in the forestry and agricultural sectors with the support of our international organizations. 
And during this year, we had a number of issues, problems, and main problems are reflected on this slide. I, due to the short of time, I'm not going to read all of these issues and the issue, these problems that we have defined. We consider that it is necessary to elim eliminate conflict situations in the sector forest and land resources management. It is necessary to develop and introduce mechanism of reducing conflict situations by implementing intersectoral collaboration that had been already explained by Dinara. She mentioned about it. In fact, if we'll have this intersectoral mechanism, collaboration mechanism, so we can reduce the number of conflict situations. Also, there is a need to have collaboration of uh, forest farms together with the pasture union, pasture users union. Also, we notice a lot of tension between them and also also issues related to the related to use of pastures from the state uh, forest farm and also we need to switch from the quantity to quality we need to improve the livestock breeds and also we need to arrange in the forest sector alternative additional sources of income next slide please And about improving the living, the living standards of the local communities, one of the problems it has to do with that because mainly the forest users have low living standards. That's why we need to develop action plan to develop a, for business development in the sector of forest products that would enable us to create additional job places and that would let us receiving additional income sources for the population uh, from the development of tourism, fish farms and marketing, packaging of the uh, of the uh, producers and also the we need to improve living standards and it is possible to do via developing food orchards and corresponding and processing to receive the producers and also development of agroforestry methods Chol Ponchi has already mentioned about it, and we will have another presentation about necessity of implementation of agroforestry in Kyrgyzstan. Next slide, please. Problem on conservation and restoration of forests. Also, we have this problem. That's why there is a need to involve local communities in the conservation of local ecosystems and to create conditions for the responsive forest management, satisfying the needs of local population, and also creating conditions by innovating technologies, innovative initiatives, I would say income generating activities. And also implementation of the activities aimed at reducing uh, land and forest pasture uh, degradation. Next slide, please. And in here I need to say that one of the important activities which is needed 
it's to involve the it's to involve population into the land management forest resources of the state forest fund it is necessary to implement best practices as i keep saying that best practices and experiences of uh, forest and pasture resources management i mean the experience of the pasture users union work and uh, giant committees pasture committees it is necessary to implement these activities in the areas of the state fund and also we need to involve forest and pasture users and NGOs in the decision making process and we need to involve the entire population as well uh, lives in the area of the state farm and we have pilot projects being implemented on implementing and participate of local communities in pilot uh, forest farm Kazol Ungur with the support of Jeff, our association is implementing this project and I hope that this project would be a model for further dissemination in the forestry sector and also we have small projects where uh, we have a plan developed management plan between uh, pasture committees and forest farms management plan it is one of the initial projects pilot project and it's good practices that uh, has to be implemented further and also we what i have mentioned all these activities had been implemented in practice and they have to be evaluated by third party and if we are going to be certified according to the international standards need to conduct the evaluation to see whether it's uh, really being implemented in reality next slide please and the problem is, is lack of knowledge of local communities. Therefore, there is a need to build capacity of local communities to uh, arrange activities on exchange of experiences and best, best practices. And also also reinforcing the awareness raising campaign in mass media newspaper and other media tools next slide and all of this in order to resolve all these problems and to have it implemented on the ground it is necessary for the forest users to develop a law and to adopt the law on forest users because there are many we have a lot of disadvantages forest users are not protected especially forest users as they mentioned forest users who rent some forest plots on the area of the state forest fund and also we need to develop some strategy or program on forest or agroforestry development in order to implement on the field level all the other forest methods and there is a need 
as we have already noted, to eliminate disadvantages in the private sector and to create conditions to amend or to develop new forest regulations and products. And if we implement all of these activities, we will do big contribution. In a big contribution to forest development. Thank you very much for your attention. I have finished my presentation. I have to say that we need to ask questions maybe after next two presentations. But I'd like to emphasize that you have some uh, issues or questions to be addressed immediately. Please address them via chat. Now I'd like to give a floor to Abdumalik Abdekaraj on sustainable management of pasture resources. Please, you are welcome, Abdumalik Abdekaraj. Dear colleagues, we have Elvira. Abdimali, he has to leave us due to his health reasons. I I will try to do my best to make this presentation. Today's presentation is about sustainable management of the pasture resources in Kyrgyzstan. Yes. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Here. We would like to emphasize the importance of uh, the pastures in our country that occupy more than 9 million hectares and comprising almost 85% of the total agricultural area. Our association unites all the population who lives uh, on the major part of our country. Next slide, please. In 2009, one of the important events in our country was uh, adoption of the law on pastures. It is the first law in Central Asia that entitles the right of management and use of management. They entitle the local community, local authorities, and prohibiting the local communities to freely use pastures. They establish fees and implementing pasture ticket tool and creating uh, long-term and short-term plans of uh, pasture management. Next slide, please. Here we can see the number of uh, created uh, pasture users union. In total, at the beginning of pasture reform, we had 454 unions of pasture unions. So these are the local communities, community organizations, including different representatives of the local population uh, that help us to consider interest of all the population. Next slide, please. Here we can see the pasture reform results. So we have divided them into four major parts, social, it's transfer of the right to manage pastures to the local population, gender equality. Also for us, it is important to see environmental results to reduce the level of de degradation and to improve the uh, forage base of the pastures. And also most used indicator, it's um, the number of livestock increased and also improve living standards of the population. Now also cultural sector results. Also we are very happy to see that we have improved relations between generations. These are the results for the past 10 years since the law had been adopted and we uh, made summarize some preliminary results. Next slide please. 
if we talk about economic results, most obvious is the money collected for pasture use. At the beginning of the reform, it was seven million sums, seven million sums, and last year the amount had been increased 20 times, around 150 million. Next slide, please. These collected funds mainly used to improve the pasture infrastructure, to buy machinery, to resolve pasture users' issues. The community takes decisions on what to spend the funds. And here on the pictures, you can see that a lot of uh, activities have been done at the cost of the funds. Next slide, please. Here you can see short brief information about our organization. It unites all the pasture users unions uh, throughout the country. And we, we work on the national level. We represent we represent interests of our country on the international level. We are member, we are the member of international land coalition and are the international networks on the national and regional level. We are members on pasture improving coordination committees and we try to do all our best to protect and to promote interest of uh, the pasture users. Next slide, please. Here you can see three main directions that we are working, that we are going to work for the following uh, five years. This is the picture that our pasture users want to see. Next slide, please. Here, you can see some snapshots of our work with pasture union unions, including youth and women. You can see capacity building of pasture users. So next slide, please. You can see training of the pasture users and also, you can see capacity building of the pasture uh, committees as well. Mobile school of the pasture committee that we implemented as a part of the IFAR funded project. It has been done in order to have pasture committees at the level of the district to have some advanced level. This is a past committee that has gone through the set of training that is very well equipped with all the required soft tools, so-called, and they become on the district level some kind of foundation where the where other members of other party unions or interested parties can uh, gain some skills and knowledge from the more experienced pasture users union. Next slide, please. One of the directions of our support to pasture users is to create a community seed funds. The project also implemented as a part of IFAD funded project. As of today, we have more than 100 uh, community seed funds created in five regions. It is very good foundation base for our past users. Next slide, please. Here we would like to emphasize the role of women in management, in pasture management. And we know that where we have women, we have good order. These are our advanced uh, ladies who are heading the pasture committee. Regardless of all the stereotypes, they have very good indicators, performance indicators. They have very good uh, results in different directions. Uh, women that we are proud of. Uh, next slide, please. It is the next slide is about agroforestry that we are discussing today and we implemented it in Salamal, Salamalik 
Ai Lali Tai Mark with the support of IFAT, where we have introduced the system of agroforestry together with the association of the forest users. We are really thankful to them. They have provided training to the local communities and also they have uh, used one hectare to implement agroforestry management uh, method. Why we have selected the Uzgen uh, district because this is most vulnerable district to the uh, emergencies, different kind of natural hazards and local and we have taken this uh, plot because locals they uh, were hopeless about this plot and it was good for nothing we have selected this plot and decided to use as our demonstration plot and we have conducted uh, analysis and we involved a local population we have trained them a lot there was also a big contribution from the local population. We are very thankful to the local authorities. The local authority of Salamayli Kailok Matu, they have even uh, provided funding from their budget. They have provided land in Akterek village. And we have planted trees there in order to reinforce the bank of the river and also we have planted our apple trees fruit trees also we have uh, resown seeds of alpha alpha to have forage for livestock and also we have arranged the irrigation irrigation had been arranged by the local forestry farm by special tools and devices and we spent whole year working on this plot and last month we've been there last time and we are very glad to see that all the uh, saplings survived and i hope that the next spring we can show good results and we are planning to arrange exchange of the experience visits for other pasture users committees and we hope that they can use it on the area. Next slide, please. It is just for your information. What we are doing in other direction is to create artificial glaciers. We have created two of them because we've been inspired by Nepalese example and we have adapted the approach in to our conditions and in Naru, in Jirgatal and in other area, we have created these two pilot areas and we achieved significant results. And we, in the summertime, we will use this uh, collected ice for irrigating livestock and plantations. And Fowl has supported us with this idea idea and last year we use our own funds for this initiative to be implemented in two regions and they, we hope that it is like a demonstration plot and in the future we hope to achieve more our results with this artificial glaciers next slide please this is the work that we do together with the public uh, fund initiative of rosa otombaiwa it is to create the pasture kindergartens it uh, helps to improve the level of knowledge and education of kids it also creates a platform to discuss actual issues and problems of pasture users in the field with participation of women as well uh, whose voices are very significant for us as of today we have 117 kindergartens created all over the country on the most remote pastures that is all from my side this is the last slide i hope that i managed to pass all the information uh, from abdi malik Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Elmira. It was very interesting and useful presentation. And we keep saying that the work you are doing that would be 
good to your result it would be good to scale up on the areas of the state forest farms even the sacrificial glacier because we have made quite a lot of mountains in the state forest farm area and i hope that state agency would also use your experience dear colleagues let us continue our webinar now i'd like to give a floor to saira gul Adjibaiwa. she's representing mes kyrgyzstan and the topic of her presentation is sustainable late use prospects for rural development Потом я даже во многом помогли, чтобы она это самое в ее презентации. Hope that the previous presenters they did all their best and they contributed to the presentation of Saira Gul, and I think now Saira Gul she has to mention what we need to do in order to implement to implement the agroforestry methods in Kyrgyzstan. Good day, dear colleagues, partners, participants of their webinar. The subject of my presentation is Agroforest Sustainable Land Use Prospects for Rural Development. And presenters, they have already presented about the agroforestry, and I will have to repeat. Next, yes. As you see, Kyrgyzstan is located in the Central Asia and have no access to the sea, and almost 60% of the population lives in the rural areas and mainly they are involved in the uh, uh, livestock breeding and uh, agriculture and as of today next slide please and when we're talking about farming and forest land uh, farming we have a number of challenges and some of these problems are reflected here for example main part of the arable lands they are being eroded degraded and every year we have the number we have the bad consumerism attitude are increasing towards uh, to natural resources and Kyrgyzstan has a very small uh, number of uh, forest area we have only 5.6 percent of the total area of the country but having said that we have more than 1 million people who live uh, in the area or next to the area of the forest farm and the livelihood depends on the forest resources and also on the past as nobody regulates the rate of uh, Pressure. It means that the pastures are being overgrazed. And the last problem we have is climate change. Next slide, please. The issue of degradation it is very important issue that needs attention of different sectors including agriculture uh, health care forest management and uh, 
it needs, it requires attention of different stakeholders, including the decision makers, shepherds, and foresters. And next slide, please. The role of agroforestry is quite important in order to improve the ecosystems and mitigate the climate change as well as for food security. Agroforestry is a single area of farming system combining the cultivation of crops and livestock with cultivating trees and shrubs and the most widely applied agroforestry methods you can see here on the pictures this wind breaks you see number three and also this bank buffers number four Sorry, uh, sorry, the speaker was using her microphone, moving back and forth, and I couldn't hear her well. Okay. Farmers, the topographic methods for two reasons. They want to increase the economic stability and the management of natural resources. Could you move to the next slide, please? With the help of agroforestry, we we can improve the yield of crops and also we increase we improve the conditions and habitats for wildlife and also we improve diversification of income sources and also increasing the yield of crops we have And Next slide, please. And uh, as disadvantages, на тренинге, поэтому там немножко интернет оказывается слабоватый, поэтому видимо. Lack of good legislation, lack of uh, intersectoral elaboration mechanism, lack of state funds, lack of farms, farmers' funds, also uh, weak awareness of the farmers and lack of consulting services. We have a big no number of problems. Next slide, please. Despite of all these problems, the Association of Forest and Less Users they try their best to implement agroforestry. And on this slide, you can see the experience of our association. I think it was almost two years ago, with the help of UNECA, we uh, introduced bank reinforcing activities alongside the Chu River. We have more than 5,000 trees planted along the bank of the rivers that reinforced the banks of Chu River. This 
three supplements also improve the ecological environmental situation and this fishes planted also they improve the social economical condition of the local population also we had demonstration plot in arashan village also we have created uploaded trees plantation which is fast growing i think this year we had alpha alpha or as part that i don't remember exactly it was sown between these trees and the experts they told me that the received uh, higher yields than usual next slide please in addition at association conducted round tables on implementation and development of agroforestry in the Kyrgyz Republic with participation of all stakeholders, interested state bodies. As a result of the round table, we have conducted analysis on implementation of agroforestry in the Kyrgyz Republic. We have developed recommendations and they had been submitted to the corresponding state bodies. Next slide, please. Here you can see the results of SWOT analysis uh, about the, I have told you already about and our my previous colleagues they have already mentioned about it next let us move to the next slide please could you move to the next slide please here the recommendations adopted during the round table from strategic point of view on developing introducing agroforestry we need to develop a concept or program of agroforestry and also on legal issues we need to make amendments into regulatory acts of the Kyrgyz republic related to agroforestry and we need to consider functional duties of the Ministry of Agriculture of the uh, state agencies on the agroforestry and also we need to conduct awareness raising campaigns. Next slide please. I think, yes, yes, I have finished in general. I just want to say that implementation and development of agroforestry would make a big contribution into food security and environmental security of the country. That's all from my side. Thank you very much for your attention. I'm sorry, I'm sorry for the bad connection. Thank you, Saira Gul. You reported in details what what has to be done in order to implement in practice agroforestry methods and in general what is required to do in order to have successful implementation in terms of the legislative support you have reported to us thank you dear colleagues we have heard all the presentations uh, so you are welcome with your questions are there any questions any questions так здесь uh, uh,
Так, микрофон, микрофон у вас сурово работает? Микрофон шатовичек. One of the participants probably wants to ask the question, but his microphone is off. Здесь какую роль может Нес мы говорили, действительно, это... About Nets, we have already discussed with his platform, which is currently... ...сплачивает вот эти... ...which is currently uniting these four organizations, and these four organizations... Association of Pasche users, Association of Forest and Land users, Association of Water users, and, and Rural Development Fund. These four organizations, they work in the agriculture and forest sectors. And I see that Nest Kyrgyzstan is working in order to reinforce or arrange intersectoral linkages. Therefore, we're working close contacts with the Minister of Agriculture and with the State Agency on the Environment Protection and Forestry. We work closely in on the national level and on the local level in order to have good close linkages. And Nest Kyrgyzstan, I think everybody understand that, and state agency and Minister of Agriculture also support the agroforestry methods. That these methods will be one of the methods of intersectoral connection, and I'll see this Kyrgyzstan in and it's reflected in our strategy, and we work according to our strategy, and we have two statements from ADA and willingness of the PIU to become members of NES Kyrgyzstan, to become members of NES Kyrgyzstan platform. And I think PIU can make also the contribution into reinforcing of intersectoral linkages and also as women organization they will participate according to the our aim that we are going to provide agenda equality i hope sarah that i managed to answer your question what are the questions do we have? Dear colleagues, are there questions? Ой, мен байтамер чыгалбайтам бу. Суроолор барлы, башкалар барлы. 
Uh, what else? I have a number of questions. Good day, dear participants of the webinar. You made good speeches and presentations. Useful for me. Let me introduce myself. My name is Samidu. I'm from Kazul Dunkur Forest Farm from the Labat Oblast region. Our families. We have rented uh, 300 hectares of uh, nuts forest, and we have not only walnut forest but also other types of forests. And we have in total 300 hectares, and we have registered our charter, and we are registered in the Ministry of Justice. We have stamp and bank account and all other formal documents. Why we are organizing? We want to conserve and protect our walnut forest. And you keep saying that you are providing different kinds of support. And uh, here we notice that we have uh, quite strong degradation of lands and forests. It seems that our participants have some problems with connection. We have prepared 300 uh, uh, tree saplings and we are going to plant them in plain. And we have our representative Chalpon and Dinara who made the speech on agroforestry. I like them very much. It's very good, promising. How can I uh, contact with you? Could you please provide us any support to our community? We have 55 households, families in our community leasing these forest lands. And we, need, we have nuts, walnuts, we have some other forest products, including mushrooms, and we, we have many other product, products, and we have around 20 hectares in mountain areas, arable lands. And I'd like to know how we can collaborate together. Thank you very much. Thank you for your question that you noted about FAO contribution. In fact, we can contact each other via iCool and the project which is implementing we are going to finish it soon, but FAO has, has many plans and hopes to have new projects and we will continue implementation of these projects within the framework of this program and we are ready for collaboration. We are open to discuss our perspectives and as part of the project we have published a lot of materials in Kyrgyz language too and we can share these publications with you you can find a lot of interesting materials there let us change our coordinate details we are open for collaboration and i hope that i managed to answer your questions thank you very much Thank you, Chalpon. Now we have a question. His uh, real name is Jamaluddin. 
and he spoke on behalf of Kogoi community. I mentioned a bit about his community in my presentation. Yes, a little bit supported by Jeff and Nes Kyrgyzstan and with our efforts we support him and i'm really pleased to see that he has arranged his community organization and he now acts on the behalf of this organization and you are doing really well searching for other partners to push forward your community organizations and as Sholpon mentioned surely we are ready to collaborate whenever you are in Bishkek I can bring you in the offices of Dinara and Sholpon and I can introduce you to them and we can discuss there the opportunities of getting further support from this organization. Thank you for your question. Do we have any other questions? Do we have any other questions? So our time is finishing. Do we have any other questions? We have five minutes more. So it seems, it seems to me that we have no other questions. In, indeed, today we have heard a lot of good things, and I think there is a need to implement The activities that we have discussed today, the only thing that I want to say, I think everybody would be interested in. Just additionally, I want to give you information that you all aware that December is the 10 year anniversary of family farmers, family farms, and we have initiative of four organizations. We have a consortium supported by NES Kurdistan. We have organized national committee of the family-based farms so the membership of the national committee is increasing So very often these four organizations, we are looking for opportunities, we are looking for support we are looking for organizations to provide support of the national committee of the family-based farms and this national committee is being supported by the Minister of Agriculture and during the meeting with the previous minister they were ready to provide all kind of support and I think here we have represented of the Minister of Agriculture I hope they will support us too and TIU and TIFA will support us in their direction and one more thing to add today we have talked a lot about agroforestry development agroforestry it is a method to provide food security of the population and association works in that direction too and so we participate in the regional project 
projects supporting small scale family farm and forest users of Kyrgyzstan, Uzbekistan and Tajikistan in order to provide support of, to resolve the problems of these farmers. I think all the farmers have common problem is to market, to sell their products and this project works in the direction in order to to supply the products of forest users to supply these products to the European market. And I hope that in the future we'll continue our collaboration, we'll stay in touch. And to continue our joint work, just recently we have created a platform as a part of this project where any farmer can display his or her products for the European countries, for the clients from the European countries and from the Eurasian Economic Union countries. And we can explain it and if you contact us, uh, we can provide you some more detailed information about this initiative. And it seems to me that we are finalizing our webinar. I'd like to thank all the participants of the webinar for their active participation. Probably we had some more participants to provide their contribution, but due to the restricted time, they couldn't do so, but I hope that we managed to discuss a lot. He's looking for one of the participants. It seems that that participant has muted microphone. Yeah. Friends, it is not a question. I'd like to congratulate you to thank you for such kind of webinar on sheer experience in pasture and forest and agroforestry management. And having heard your presentations, I see that we gain a big help and support in that sector. Therefore, I wish you big uh, success, well-being, and good results in your further work. I would like to congratulate you with forthcoming new year. It has to be more successful than the current year. I hope that all these coronavirus uh, issues will disappear next year. And I hope that we will have a chance to meet offline, but not online. I, uh, I love you all, and I really respect you all. Dear colleagues, we are end of the year and I'd like to join Kuralai. Kuralai's congratulations. I'd like to congratulate all of you with the forthcoming new year and I'd like to thank all the participants of the webinar. First of all, I'd like to thank organizers of this webinar. I'd like to thank Ms. Sarah from ILC Rome and, and also I'd like to thank Andita from Rome. I am 
see this, and also I'd like to thank Sanate, that's Kyrgyzstan, who organized this webinar, and I think the webinar, as you have mentioned, was organized and was conducted on a good level, and as I have mentioned, all the required materials, all the materials that you need, the organizers whom I have mentioned, uh, these organizers will circulate materials if you need them. And I hope that this is not our last meeting. У нас еще очень много встреч будет, я думаю, в части того, чтобы ну, практически реализовать агролесоводство. I hope we'll have numerous meetings related to the agroforestry development in our country and within the framework of ILC. We have a need to implement agroforestry in Central Asia and Mongolia. And I hope that in this sector of agroforestry, we will have some more meetings in the future. And if we don't have any further questions or comments to what I have already said, I'd like to thank all of you and to say goodbye. See you, see you soon.